to ready and go. So for this one then, well there'll be a long way and there'll be a short way depending on what you know. Just taking it at face value though, the long way this is then, just taking this as face value as a trigonometrical expression, you'll notice that the answers don't involve powers of the individual trig terms, so the first thing would be to get rid of them. Well, there's an obvious fact, simple factorization there. You could take out sine squared, because you know sine squared can be changed into cos squared, and that'll give the two terms something in common. So sine x times sine x squared plus cos x times cos x squared. Of course, you could have jumped straight in with, which is what you're going to do next, 1 minus cos squared, 1 minus sine squared, because after all, you're not having to set it out formally. I'll need to put this down. So 1 minus cos squared x plus cos x times 1 minus sine squared x. Now expand that. That will isolate a sine x. I notice that in some answers, an isolated sine x. But minus sine x cos squared x. But that's not bad, because look, you've got a sine x cos x. That's one of those patterns that you know. Plus a cos x, there's a nice wee isolated cos x, minus cos x sine squared x. Again, they've got something in common. They've got a sine x cos x. Well, I think first of all, I'll put those two together. So I've got sine x plus cos x, and then those two I've got minus, and since they're the same, I'll just put them in a little bracket. I know this is like a, a wasted line because all I've done is written the same thing out again, which is probably what you wouldn't do if you were just doing a multiple choice. Cos squared x plus cos x times sine squared x. I know it's taken ages, but you're just batting through these identities. And then you would say, right, they've got sine x, cos x in common. So I've got sine x plus cos x minus, and I can take that out as a factor, sine x cos x times, and that will just leave the cos x plus the sin x. Then if I put a little aesthetic bracket around this one, I can see I've now got another common factor of sin x plus cos x. So I'll take out that common factor of sin x plus cos x. And then I'm left with one of them minus this expression here. And there's the answer. Now you probably had your sine double angle sword half drawn and ready to use there. So you could have changed this expression if necessary, but it wasn't needed, so put it away. Okay, it took a bit of time, but probably still within the limit, but there is a quicker way. Which is, if you know your factorizations of some simple expressions, you already know your a squared minus b squared, the difference of two squares, goes to a minus b, a plus b. And you also know that for the corresponding sum of two squares, there isn't a factorization. Well, a factorization involving integers, that is. But you could extend this pattern to the difference of two cubes. In fact, you can go beyond that. But just learning these extra two can be handy. The difference of two cubes will again be a minus b, so it starts the same way, and it continues the same way with positives, because that would have to be a squared to make the first term, b squared to make the last term, and then plus an ab in the middle. When this gets multiplied out, all you're left with is the first times the first and the last times the last, because the others cancel out. So that's a handy one to remember, the difference of two cubes. It's the same as the difference of two squares, just with this extended to a quadratic running through the terms, giving power to each time. And similarly, there's an expression for the sum of two cubes, unlike the sum of two squares, which starts a plus b. And again, it must go a squared to make the first term, and it must go b squared to make the last term, and then with symmetry, you have a b, and that must be a plus over here, but for the middle terms to disappear, it would have a negative in here, so you're only left with the first times the first and the last times the last. If you know that these two patterns, they can be useful in simplifying problems. The difference of two cubes and the sum of two cubes.
So, looking at this with your new glasses on, you'd say, wait, I've got the sum of two cubes. So you can use the pattern for the factorization of the sum of two cubes, which would be the parts which are being cubed, the sum of the two parts, times, and then the quadratic, the sine x squared, but minus, so parts will disappear, each of them on its own, still forming a power two, and then the last one, plus cos squared x. See, that didn't take long if you knew that pattern. And you say, wait a minute, sine squared and cos squared makes one, so then you've just got sine x plus cos x times one minus, and then sine x cos x, and there you are. Job done.